Today we're going to old school and I'm going to show you how to burn a CD, but more specifically how to burn an audio CD that's going to play back in a standard car CD player or a standard CD player on its own. Dinner to the Bernie Inn twice a year or something like that. I've seen some stores online on YouTube and they're giving out the wrong information, so I'm here to bring some order to this chaos. Let's do this, roll the intro. Hey name tags and welcome, this is Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie on this channel with the reviews, repairs and tutorials of tech. So if you're new here, consider subscribing, enable the bell icon notification and everyone smash that like button for more videos like this one. Also use my Amazon affiliate links to help the channel out without costing you anything extra. Thanks a million. Now I know most people don't use CDs anymore, but it's quite handy to have and I do have some clients who use it. So quick little tutorial will do. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is that some people are saying you need a CDRW and that not true all you need is a blank cd whether it's minus r or plus r it doesn't matter also try to get a decent quality cd now the higher price doesn't always mean the better quality do some research i've actually got this one from poundland five for a pounds but i'm not too bothered it's just for this tutorial so it's not a major issue now, a couple of things you need to know before we start. First thing is about the actual format of the audio CD. To play back on a standard CD player or a car player, you can't use MP3s or MP4. If you just bring some MP3 tracks onto a audio CD and burn it through Windows Media Player, it's probably not going to work. I was involved in a crash yesterday. The speed limit on the route near these... Also going to be installed. Police say the collision also involved. It will work on your computer, but not on a standard CD player. So you must convert MP3 or MP4 into WAV or AIFF formats at 44,100 hertz and 16 bit PCM. Yep, it's that specific. So the format and the rate. You know, the MP3 and MP4 are compressed versions, and the WAV is more for Windows uncompressed, and AIFF is more for Mac computers uncompressed. So they're much larger in size anyway. So do bear in mind that a standard CD probably holds about between 70 and 80 minutes of track on a 700 megabyte size CD. So for that, you will need a couple of softwares. The first one I would recommend to use to convert would be Audacity. I've done a couple of tutorials on that. Check out the link above and description below for how you can actually improve your voice using Audacity, but also add some sound effects. You need to convert with Audacity. You can use other software. Be careful when you do download free software from the internet, you will get a lot of bloatware. So make sure you always choose custom installation and untick things you don't need. Otherwise, do at your own risk. Uh, I don't think it's a problem with Audacity. I'm talking about the other software that you may want to choose. The other thing that you're going to need after you convert it, you're going to need a software to burn it. I would recommend something like CD Burner XP, which works on Windows, or you could try CDX, which is more open source, but I haven't actually tried this one. Now, by default, you can always try Windows Media Player. However, the default uh, settings of Windows Media Player will probably not work on the standard CD player because you have to change a couple of things, which I'm going to show you. So first, let's go back to Audacity and I'm going to show you what I mean. Now, I'm going to import some tracks which are MP3 onto the Audacity uh, software. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is obviously, if you have multiple tracks, you can import all of them. And if you have them like this, they will be imported as a series like a track playlist we're currently on uh, stereo don't forget to make sure that you've got a couple of libraries enabled which is in preferences and you go to libraries and you need the lame and ff and pack library you can use these buttons to locate and download them there's tutorials online again check the tutorial now the other thing you could also do here as default and set it go to quality here and uh, choose 44 1000 hertz a standard and 16 bit all right the other options are 24 bit and 32 bit float but you want the 16 bit for standard cd quality okay if you forgot to do that you can always come up here once you've imported your tracks and click this down arrow and you go down and you make sure your format is 16 bit pcm and your rate is at 44,100 hertz Okay, so now you've got one, two, three, there's kind of, I think, 11 tracks on there. And uh, 
once you do that if you want to go ahead and see and save your project you can do that but i'm not going to do that right now now what we're going to do is export all of these tracks together on multiple export and convert them to wave because they're currently mp3 format so you can go to file export and choose export multiple and uh, you make sure you choose the folder that you want to save them in that's up to you and uh, you make sure you drop down this menu and you select wave microsoft signed 16-bit pcm that's the conversion act of it and you export now once you click on export for each of these tracks you're gonna have some uh, metadata tags if you want to edit them so it's a question of just pressing ok 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 until it's done and it's going to export the whole thing i've already done that i'm going to show you so i'm going to cancel that right i'm going to bring my file explorer and i'm going to show you this is for example if you check it's an mp3 file okay but i've converted them to a wave file there you go so they've all been converted to wave okay so that's what we're going to need so now the next step is up to you whichever software you want to use but we're going to first try the windows media player okay on windows media player i've already put an audio cd here it gets a blank cd you could start with creating a playlist if you wish but i'm just going to drag all my tracks from another window and bring it straight into this playlist here so this is the burn tab okay so the first thing you need to do is to make sure you selected audio cd if you drop down this menu here you can see there's data cd or dvd and audio cd make sure you select audio cd data cd is only going to copy it as ones and zeros and will probably only play on a computer and definitely not play on a standard cd player so now we've got hopefully about 33 minutes and 12 seconds free left on this but i'm not bothered this is just for this tutorial so hopefully all these tracks which are wave remember not mp3 compress okay wave format they should fit on the cd now the next thing you need to do is drop down this menu again and go to more burn options and let me bring this closer here so under the burn tab again at burn speed i would suggest selecting something like medium now you could burn something at fastest if you wish but i've noticed from experience and from reports that sometimes when you burn something very fast not all the data gets recorded and uh, you may have error playback so it's always best to drop down to maybe something like medium the rule of thumb i think for a high quality professional audio cd is four times the speed but you know with these you can get away with using medium all right and uh, the last uh, function you're going to want to check is under data disk add a list of all burned files to the disk in this format by default it's going to be wpl you want to select m3u otherwise it's going to only play on a default windows media player or on a computer but not on a standard cd player so click on apply and okay and you're done now after you've done that all you need to do is click on start burn and it's going to burn hopefully no problem now the second method is you could use something like cd burner xp and uh, it's almost the same principle all you need to do is drag your wave uh, tracks onto here or you can always click on uh, add and it's going to add them and then you see the green indicates we have about 47 minutes and then go click on burn and it's going to take you to another window and here you've got some options you can leave as default which is no pause between tracks or add a pause you can leave the rest as default like finalize disk and eject disk after burning or you can simulate burning process but i've chosen not to do that but here the burn speed again you can select a specific burn speed i've chosen 24 which seems to be fine you could take a risk with 48 if you want but i would advise going for lower speed just not to have any issue so then all you need to do now and just click on burn disk and bops your uncle bish bash push you're done so guys i hope this was easy peasy i know it's not as straightforward as downloading from the internet and just you know transferring everything to usb or uploading to your drive or google drive or whatever cloud and mostly whatever you download from the internet is going to be mp3 or mp4 or compressed so if you want to burn to a cd remember you have to convert it to 
wave or AIFF 44100 hertz and 16 bit PCM and then burn onto an audio CD using a software. So that was a look back into OG times and hope you enjoyed this. It's a lot simpler nowadays. So if you've enjoyed this kind of stuff, let me know down below if you have any questions about this. And if you're wondering what else to watch after this, I'm going to have a couple of videos at the end screen. So feel free to check my other stuff on the channel. So as usual, you know what to do down below. Like, comment, and share this video. Consider subscribing if you're new here. And as always, it was a pleasure. This was Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.